What is good, you guys? I just want to talk a little bit about the scheduling at GFS. So I'm going to go over the scheduling while you're in training. Then while you know you go solo for the first time, that's like you have this period of time where you're solo, but you don't have a route yet. And then I'm going to go over once you get your route. So right off the bat, as soon as you come into the, to the job and you start your training, you're going to be in a schedule from Monday to Friday, five days a week. You're going to be coming in usually around 5 o'clock in the morning and you're just going to be riding with somebody. So that's going to be like around two to three weeks, depending. It could be two weeks, three weeks, whatever. So in those two to three weeks, you're going to be coming at 5 in the morning, Monday through Friday, and you're off on the weekends. You will not be working on the weekends while you're in training. But it is five days. I know Cisco is one of the companies that <clears throat> all the new drivers, they're working four days a week. So, but they're hourly and then they still get around their, you know, 50 hours because they work long days at Cisco. But, but remember, I'm talking about the Miami terminal. So maybe Texas, Plant City, you guys might do it a different way. I'm talking about Miami specific. So first two, three weeks, Monday through Friday, you're going to be going in at five in the morning and you're going to be riding with somebody and you're going to be able to check your schedule every, you know, the day before and it'll tell you who you're gonna be riding with. Uh, so you could either find out that guy's number or you go into the office and just ask who the guy is, da da da. And obviously in, in the schedule, when he sees it, he's gonna be able to tell that you know, you're gonna be riding with him as well. So that way you guys can just try to communicate when he gets into the office, you know, oh, who's this guy? He's gonna be riding with me. You're gonna be asking who's this guy? I'm gonna be riding with him. And you figure that out. So that's in the first two, three weeks, going in at five. The average end time is around 3 o'clock, could be sooner, could be later, but it's usually around, you know, you start at 5 in the morning, you're going to be ending around 3 o'clock. So that's first two, uh, in the first two, three weeks when you're in training. After that, remember, you're not going to have an assigned truck at first either, you know. You don't just go in there once they set you off by yourself, boom, assigned truck, ready to go. Like I said, though, this is in the Miami terminal. By the way... If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'm over here always talking about, you know, GFS, give you guys some tips, help you, you know, give you guys something to expect. So if you like the content, make sure you subscribe, like this video right now. It really helps out a lot. All right. So once you're done with training, you're not going to be getting your, your assigned truck right away. So you're going to be going in still around the same time, five in the morning, even four in the morning, because... You always got to check the schedule the day before because you're not going to be knowing where you're going to go at all. And remember, it's better you get a little bit earlier that we're able to get a truck on time. And it's better if you get a single axle truck than a double axle truck. You don't know. You've never been to these spots, especially if this is your first time uh, driving the tractor trailers. It's better that you, you know, get a single axle than a double axle. Because sometimes what happens is you get to the warehouse and the only tractors left are double axles. So when you show up in the morning, let's say your route starts at five o'clock and you show up at five and then a lot of people's route started early. So everybody's out with their truck and obviously you have to look around and you see who the assigned truck is to what. And if you, when you finally find a truck that's not assigned to someone, hopefully it's a single axle. If not, it's a double axle and it is what it is. You're gonna have to go out there with a, in a double axle and you're starting brand new, you know. Double axle turning, u turns you gotta it's a little bit wider it cuts a little bit less it's not a big difference but when you're first starting off you know you want as much how can you say that like as much advantage to you as possible anything to make it easier for you so that single axle is going to make it easier for you but whatever we got that out the way you show up you find your truck you could be starting at four in the morning maybe you're uh you're going to boca that's around an hour away from the miami terminal so those routes start at four in the morning or you have one that's in uh, North Miami or, you know, Brickell, something like that. Those might start around uh, five because it's not too far. And uh, there's even routes that start at six o'clock. But just know if your route starts at six o'clock, expect to be riding in a double axle because all the single axles will for sure be taken. <laughs> because you're not the only one that's not going to have an assigned truck. There's people that have been here three months, four months, five months, and still don't have an assigned truck. 
So that kind of varies depending what kind of trucks are available at the moment. And, uh, you know, there's not really too much to say about that. In my experience, it took me about, I believe, four to five months to get my assigned truck. But like I said, there's people that have been here six months and still don't have their assigned truck. I'm not sure exactly how that works or, you know, how they go about assigning you a truck. Because obviously if you're getting there, at, you know, whatever time it is and you're getting, if you're going to be uh, looking for a truck and you find one, that means it's, it's available. Sometimes it's because someone called off or, you know, they're just an extra truck. Why don't they assign you that truck? I'm not fully sure. But uh, continuing on from there, you're pretty much going to be scattered. You're going to be covering people's routes. So you're going to be going everywhere in the beginning. You're going to Boca, Miami, Brickell, Homestead, freaking Key Biscayne, uh, even Key West. So yeah, it's gonna be kind of all over the place. And also, you will not be working Monday through Friday anymore. Still five days, but you'll be off either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. One of those days will be your day off plus Sunday, but you will be working Saturday. That's just how it is. So you'll work Monday, and then you're either off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and you work the other two days, work Friday, work Saturday, and then you're off Sunday again. Now there will come a time that you probably get offered the Monday through Friday, like I got the chance. Around that five month mark, I also got offered to work Monday through Friday. Some people will take that opportunity and work Monday through Friday, have two consecutive days off, Saturday and Sunday, you know, the regular work schedule. That's like the preferred work schedule, right? Everybody wants to work Monday through Friday and have the weekends off. <clears throat> but remember the kind of job you're doing. This is not an office job, you know, you're working and it's physical and you might hurt yourself and it takes a toll on your body. You might feel it on your back. Every now and then I get these little lower back pains. It's not too, it's nothing too crazy. You know, spread some icy hot now and then, whatever. And I'm good to go for the next day. But you still feel it there. You know, it's still there. A wrong move. And you could really, you know, pull your back, mess it up. Now you're gone and workers comp. And if that happens too early, when you don't have your benefits, you don't have the workers comp yet, you might even have to let, uh, get let go. I've heard of that occasion. It happened to one driver, it happened before I got to that job, but I've heard it happen. That someone started within his training, he got hurt, let off right away. So obviously try to take it easy, take it at your pace. Um, even, even though you want to get back home early, remember that this is something your body needs to get used to. If you've never done this type of work before. So, you know, take it at a steady pace. Learn as much as you can and just take it easy when you're throwing them boxes because... It is a really physical job and these cases, you know, there are a lot of heavy bags and a lot of heavy cases. So just keep that in mind, you know, don't hurt yourself. Don't try to speed through it. Just take it all in, learn the process and, you know, you'll go from there. Don't get too crazy with it. <clears throat> so, yeah, personally, me, personally, my schedule is, you know, I have my route already. I have my permanent route. They did offer me the Monday through Friday, but since I denied it, I'd rather have my Wednesday off. So I work Monday, Tuesday, off Wednesday, back Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Then I'm off Sunday. So I work five days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's five days. So, you know, my schedule is, uh, I'm usually in a, I already have my area that I go to. It usually starts between five or six i never start at four it's just not what my schedule is the the area that i do the the spots open up the restaurants open up pretty late so there's no point of me waking up at four getting there and then having to wait and then I have to get some downtime if you want to know learn more about downtime and what it is you know cause that is an extra way to make more money and you know get fatter checks if you want to know more about downtime let me know down in the comments i'll make a video about that what can you put as downtime uh how much is downtime um but yeah, that'll be in a different video. So yeah, my route usually starts between five to six in the morning. Not really later than that. On some occasions, the warehouse isn't ready. You, once, when you get there, you might have to wait on your route to be done, but that's not really, you know, it doesn't happen too often. There was this period of time when the whole COVID thing was going on. Yeah, around that time, you know, they were short staffed in the warehouse, so it'll happen sometimes, but it's not really happening too often anymore. But yeah, as far as the schedule goes, I'm pretty sure, you know, that pretty much covers it. Just keep in mind that all schedules are different. 
depending where you're going, what you get assigned. It's kind of just what they need at the moment. So when you hop in, they need someone to cover a certain schedule. This certain schedule is open. Um, and then that's what you'll be assigned to. Sometimes they even bid on schedules. Every now and then new schedules are made. So if you already have your own schedule, you're able to bid on it. And obviously the everything goes by seniority. So if you have more time, let's say three people bid on it, they're gonna get the person with the most amount of time to win that bid. But that means if that person bids on another schedule and he gets that schedule and you know a whole because you you get your schedule with the route and everything you take the whole route and it's schedule how it goes so if that person with the most seniority wants to bid on a different schedule and he gets it that means his route is up for bid so you might be able to bid for his and so on and so on but uh that pretty much covers it i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you learned something like i said if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe like this video it really helps and i'll see you guys in the next one